We can only pray in this time of aloneness and suffering that God will be merciful and, and speed the end. This voiceless cry of mercy as this satellite spans the earth should be long remembered as a symbol of the torture the animal world must go through. Martin's so generous, he sort of gave me carte blanche freedom to uh, listen to his work and do what I do. And uh, that's a very rare uh, gift. He gave me just enough 
direction and I could sense what these pieces were and what they meant to visualize and explore in my own way without a lot of direction and then um, come up with ways of emoting what the music was already emoting. As an archaeologist, I found it really interesting. I like to be hampered in some way. I like, I like to have restrictions on how many colors I can use. And the restriction in um, archaeology is that your artifacts may only be very minimal. And what can you interpret from those? So I wouldn't ask a lot of questions from Martin about the pieces of music and then I would interpret them emotionally and as a kind of archaeological site. There was enough textual meaning to what he was giving me, especially with Laika and Orphan. Laika is a very specific story in history with a very meaningful, specific set of angers and uh, warnings for all of us. And I thought that was a very interesting place to explore rather than the music. I didn't listen to the song all that much until I got the sound file to make the video. The interesting thing about Laika, in, in particular, was that it, I think it meant more than just Laika, obviously. It was about uh, animals being tested in scientific experiments uh, under duress and can lead to death, intentionally or unintentionally. And the meaning of the song is very powerful. So I went about collecting footage of my favorite animals, uh, my friend's pets, usually cats and dogs. And so there's, there's quite a few cats and dogs in the video. This all started in 2019, in October. Some cats visited me in, in the garden here and they no longer exist from the original shooting uh, for this video. So it, it became progressively a very emotional visual catalog and diary. Of course, then in March of 2020, COVID-19 hit us all globally. And I had already got quite far into the video of Leica. And I had already done quite a lot of footage with real cameras, you know, video cameras, digital cameras. And so as of March, 2020, I was left in the position of actually all I had left and usable was that footage, but also my iPad, which was dying. And I still have it and I still use it, but it has interference on the screen. And I have a friend with a, an iPhone. And what I would do was show sequences on my iPad and then reshoot them on the iPhone to get the interference because I thought the interference was a very interesting aesthetic for Sputnik number two and already I had already got footage of myself with that dying iPad, taking footage of local newspapers here in Guelph on microfilm uh, from the 1950s, from 1957, from that week of uh, Sputnik number two. And so that there was all this sort of grainy, um, bad, I call, I call it bad TV. Uh, it's the aesthetic of um, communications going a bit wrong. And uh, 
that is an, an aesthetic that I kind of enjoy. And even if things are pristine, I'll make them go a bit pear-shaped. I won't bring the television to the campsite, but I will bring a set of project ideas to an environment and then see what the environment gives me. Yes, I am a big Brian Eno fan and to such an extent that I don't really follow anything that he says anymore because it's, it's sort of ingrained now. Never repeat an experiment, never, you know, don't write it down, just, you know, it's like cooking and gardening. So I like, I like both of those things. And Martin knows my aesthetic um, likes and values. So when he says a certain thing, I, I know where he's coming from and I know that he knows that reference. And that does help, um, but then I sort of quickly put that aside and, and just be me um, and it's, it's, been a, it's been a very creative um, experience working with Martin because we're kind of similar spirits. Uh, we don't want to retread um, old paths. I get some ideas from Martin and then I sort of shut off and I go, I go to work. <laughs> and then later on in the project, I present things and um, we go from there. For a person, for a creative person like myself who likes restrictions, it was actually a very creative time because I was allowed to have restrictions because restrictions were placed upon all of us. So I found it um, a permission to discover what could happen with such restrictions. And I think a lot of uh, creative people in that period created a lot of work. Um, the problem was that the industry was hamstrung and that the industries of gallery, restaurant, music, concert halls, Broadway, Hollywood, they were hampered. But the people making the work uh, we're creatives. The creatives, they, they, they just continue. They, they, they got to do biologically what they do.
we've seen the other side where, yes, we now recognize that the venue is a very important part in aspect of how you show your work. But it's not who you are. So it's an interesting thing about creativity. I think it's always there. And I think the more restrictions there are, there's probably more creativity happening, but it's how you get it out there and how, how it's seen. And I think there's the expectation these days because we have all the social media that if you're creative and it's not being heard or seen, then it's your fault. But in general, um, my sensibility of what I do is more like what I did for Ofren. So Orphan is, Martin gave me uh, some very interesting reading uh, about um, hollow centers, interconnectedness rather than um, ego centricity. And I had already been thinking of such a thing as um, no center. So Orphan was about this empty shell and from there went to stones and rocks and my local winter landscape in Canada, which can feel sometimes quite empty. It's about survival and it's about how everybody on this globe and I'm, we're speaking as Glasgow was finishing, um, how we must sustain, uh, even though we are a hollow center, we are connected in a massive network. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing, and it's very, very fragile. <laughs>